Hey guys, it's Sarah here with Crimson and Wool and I am coming at you with another tutorial. So today you are gonna learn how to make this cute crocheted bear. I'm calling this the baby shower bear because it was inspired by a baby shower order that I had. So these are the colors that I have made it in so far. It's super easy, the body works up in one piece, and you can use just a variety of colors. Um, so all of these are made with Karen One Pound Yarn, and then this one actually is a um, Hobby Lobby yarn. But I will leave all of the info you need in the description box below, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so working on the leg, you're going to make work six single crochets into a magic circle. And that is our six single crochets. So for round two, you're going to work two single crochets into each stitch all the way around for a total of 12 single crochets. So for round three, you are going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around for a total of 12 single crochets. Round four, we are going to do a decrease round. So you're gonna work a single crochet into that first stitch, and then we're gonna work five single crochet decreases. So to do that, you're going to insert your hook into the front loop of the next stitch, and then wrap around and insert your hook into the front of the next stitch next to that. And so now we have three hoops on our hook, okay? And so we're gonna yarn over and pull through two of those, and then yarn over and pull through two. So we're gonna repeat that four more times. And then we should have one single crochet left in that round and you're just going to work a single crochet into that and you should have a total of seven stitches we're going on to round five one single crochet into each stitch all the way around For round six, we are going to increase. So we have worked the foot like we have here, and now we're gonna increase to widen that out. So to do that, we are gonna work one single crochet into the first stitch and two single crochets into the next. And that's the pattern repeat for this round. One single crochet and a single crochet increase. one single crochet, a single crochet increase. 
and then you will end the round with working one single crochet into that last stitch. And you should have a total of 10 stitches. For round seven and eight, you're going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Sadly, I lost a little footage, so at the end of the round, go ahead and cut the yarn off and then just weave it back into the leg. Your next step is to make the other leg, so go ahead and work that up and I will meet you back at the end of round eight. Okay, so now I have worked up the other leg and what we want to do is we want to move over to this stitch. So we're not gonna cut the yarn off like we did with this one. We are going to remove the stitch marker and then we are gonna do a loose slip stitch into the next stitch and we're going to do that one more time and so now we are more in the center of this leg and then we're going to chain two one two and then we're going to join this leg and so you want to make sure that your feet are facing the same direction and so i kind of just push them up against like this and then I stack them and line them up. Make sure that they're good. And then we are going to work a single crochet. And that is going to count as our first single crochet. So this might take some trial and error to make sure that you have your feet lined up. I don't like to stuff until I have them connected. Um, but if I go like this, they look pretty secure. There's going to be somewhat of a gap because of that um, chain two space. But so just for a little helpful hint. <laughs> okay, so now we have our first single crochet and this is going to be counting as round nine. So we're going to work 24 single crochets all the way around. Okay, so simply you just want to work 24 single crochets evenly all the way around. And so if it's some trial and error and you have to work it up a few times, you'll get the hang of it. What I'm showing you right here is just working across that chain two space. You're just simply working two single crochets into that chain two space and then when you wrap around the leg continuing to work a single crochet you're going to do the same thing with the chain two space on the other side. Okay, so if you come across this round and you don't have 24, but you're close, you're like either one over or one below, you could always work two single crochets or do a decrease. It's pretty forgiving. You just wanna make sure that you don't have any gaps. So for rounds 10 through 14, you are simply going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Remember to move up your stitch marker, and we're gonna do this for a total of five rounds. Simply working one single crochet into each stitch. Okay, I'm on round 11. And then I want to pause here for a second and stuff these legs. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the stuffing. I'm gonna push it in. I like to use my scissors. Just be careful as always. And then I wanna push it in towards the foot. I don't wanna overstuff because then it's gonna take away from that cute little ankle. 
So I just wanna get enough in there to make the foot shape. And then I'm gonna take some more stuffing and then focus stuffing around the leg. Like this. Just making sure that I maintain that little ankle. I don't wanna to stuff too much until we have more of the body worked up, but just get enough in there. So that you have enough of the leg stuff, but that none of it is in the way from you, um, in the way so that you don't catch it while you're working with um, your next round. So go ahead and do that to this, that same thing on this side of the leg and then continue. Right, so now we've stuffed the feet a little. Now let's stuff the body just a little bit. So I'm gonna take it and I always like to push the stuffing onto one side of the leg a little bit and then take my scissors and kind of stuff. And then the same thing on the other side. All right, so working round 15, we're gonna do a decrease round. We're gonna work one single crochet into the next two stitches. So one, two, and then we're gonna work a single crochet decrease. So that's the pattern repeat. Two single crochets, and then a single crochet decrease. And then you're gonna repeat that all the way around for a total of 18 stitches for round 15. For round 16, work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Round 17, you are going to work uh, decreases. So you're going to work one single crochet into the first stitch and then a single crochet decrease into the next. And that's the pattern repeat, one single crochet and a single crochet decrease. And you will repeat that all the way around and that will give you a total of 12 single crochets So for round 18, you are going to work a single crochet into the next four stitches and then a single crochet decrease. And you will repeat that, a single crochet into the next four stitches. and a single crochet decrease over the last two stitches. And that will give you 10 single crochets. So we're gonna go ahead and stuff before we continue on. So I will take some stuffing and I like to work one side first, make sure it's nice and firm but not overstuffed. If it's poking through or stretching your workout so much that you see the stuffing then that's just too much stuffing. So as you can see here it's nice and firm but not overstuffed and then I'm going to do the same thing turn and then work some on this side. And I find working from side to side it gives me more of a um, balance with the stuffing. 
so I could feel that those two sides are worked and then I'll work some and it will kind of um, fill up the rest of it. So now we have worked the body and we are gonna go ahead and start working up the head. And now we're going to start round 19. We're gonna work two single crochets into each stitch all the way around. So now we are increasing for the head. So that's two single crochets into each stitch all the way around and we will move up our stitch marker and then we'll have a total of 20 single crochets for round 19. For round 20, we are going to increase again. And so um, we are gonna do one single crochet into the first stitch, and then a single crochet increase, which will be two single crochets into the next. And that is the pattern repeat. One single crochet and a single crochet increase. And we'll continue that, and that will give you a total of 30 single crochets for the round. Round 21 is another increase round. So to do that, we are gonna work one single crochet into the next four stitches, and then work a single crochet increase into that fifth stitch. So the pattern repeat, repeat is four single crochets, single crochet increase into the next. and that will give you a total of 36 stitches. So continue working and I will meet you back at the end of the round. Now for the next seven rounds, we are going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And that's gonna be rounds 22 through 28 working one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And that will be 36 single crochets total. And you will work that first seven rounds. So at this point, I think you guys are pretty good to go. I'm gonna work my seven rounds and then um, I will meet you back here when you have finished yours and we will place our safety eyes. All right, so I went ahead and finished my seven rounds of single crochet. Um, that was round 28. Um, that brought me to round 28. So now it is time to go ahead and place our safety eyes and then finish stuffing a little bit more. But let's talk safety eyes just for a quick second because um, I want to show you guys this little hack that I, that I do. But basically, I've always used the Darcy safety eyes right here, and then they had this really secure, um, like, hard plastic um, backing. But um, I have found out that they um, either have gone out of business or something happened. Yeah, I don't know what exactly the story is, but they are no longer making these. Um, and so you can't, I haven't been able to find them with this backing. I found some other ones, but they're different backings, but no longer am I able to find the nine millimeters um, in the Darcy brand. So I still have some left um, for the time being, but I have gone on to Amazon and I've found these guys. So um, they are shorter, but they are almost 
the same size. They say they're nine millimeters, but they look a little smaller to me. And then they come with this like rinky tink <laughs> um, uh, backing. And so I'm gonna show you what I do to secure them because these are relatively cheap um, on Amazon. And then I'll show you what I do just to secure it um, better and hold it in place. Um, that way you guys can do it too. But of course, as always, disclaimer, always let um, anyone you're selling these or giving these items to know um, just these aren't meant for children under three and under just because of choking hazards. But of course, I just advise anyone and then I let them handle it as they see fit, you know. Um, but yeah, sorry. I just wanted to add that because I always like to no, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you've been looking for the Darcy eyes, but they are, you can't get them anymore. So, all right, so let's move on to placing our safety eyes and what I do to secure these Amazon ones. So, um, you could count up your rows and then go off the row to where you place your eyes, but let's make it easier because that's what I like to do. Um, so, you want to place your eyes. Um, I always start at the neck and then that's row one. And then I'll go one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm gonna place them between rows six and seven of the head. Um, just when I'm on, like trying to get things quick, it's just easier than counting my rows. So I just go one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna place them between, between rows six and seven. I'm gonna place one eye, just kind of line it up with the leg. And then I'm gonna count six stitches over. So to do that, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and six, and place my safety eyes. So to me, that looks a little off. So I'm gonna go over one row this way, and then one row this way. And I feel like that looks a little bit more lined up. Um, so it's kind of trial and error, but just as long as you have it between rows six and seven of the head and then lined up with the legs, you are golden. So let's get to this little hack. I take them and I place them with this. So you have your like safety washer and you could either uh, push it in this way. That's what I would do with these ones. But this one, I'm gonna turn it and have it go this way. And so I'm gonna place the safety backing, let's see, like that. And it's kind of pushed in, you see? And then I'm gonna do that on this one. And then I'm gonna take my best friend, which is my glue gun, <laughs> and I'm gonna glue them. And then that's what I do. And it makes me feel like they are super secure. So I'm gonna take my glue gun, which is very well loved, and you will see that. <laughs> and then I'm going to glue around I kind of go around like that and then around a little bit like that and then over the end of the, uh, the actual like eye stem I don't know what to call that and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here I'm gonna go around And then like this. And I am gonna let those dry. And then we'll move on. So you could go ahead and do that hack. This is what I like to do. I just feel like it makes them extra secure. Um, but again, just always use this safety <laughs> um, instructions per the directions of the safety eyes, which is three and over but I'm sure you guys all know that. So we'll go ahead and let, let those dry and then I will meet you back here so that we can move on to stuffing and then finish working up the head. All right, so glue is all dried up and then that's what it looks like. And we are ready to start stuffing. And so what I like to do is, of course, use my scissors because I feel like it just helps. Um, and then I'm gonna grab just a little bit of stuffing and we're gonna get the neck secure so to do that I just kind of stuff around I know there's like really no way for you to see up close but um, same thing as my other dolls 
just kind of stuff around making sure the neck is um, firm. So, you could see that the body is nice and um, firm, but not overstuffed. And then we're going to work a little bit more around the neck area. And then we could stuff our head a little bit and get round 29 now. And this will be our first decrease round. We are going to work one single crochet into the first four stitches. So, that will be four single crochets and then you're gonna work a single crochet decrease. And then work that all the way around and you should have a total of 30 single crochets for round 29. And I'll meet you back to start round 30. Round 30, we are going to do another decrease round. So we want to do a pattern repeat of three single crochets, then a single crochet decrease. So one, two, three, and then work your decrease. And you're gonna repeat that all the way around, and that will give you a total of 24 stitches for round 30. So I'm gonna stuff a little more before we do round 31. I'm just gonna stuff so that the head feels a little more full but you definitely don't want to have any of the stuffing in the way while you are trying to finish working your decrease rounds round 31 and you're going to work a single crochet into the next two stitches and then a single crochet decrease repeat all the way around and i will meet you back for round 32. All right, so now I lost a little footage, but it's okay. I'm just gonna describe what we're gonna do in round 32. Um, it will be one single crochet, then a single crochet decrease. This will leave you with a total of 12 single crochets for the round. So closing off with our final decrease, I'm gonna remove my stitch marker and then you work one single crochet decrease all the way around, leaving you with a total of six single crochets. So go ahead and cut off um, a longer tail, and you'll see why in a minute. But I would say a good 12, 12, to 18 inches and so now I'm gonna finish stuffing just a little bit more before we close off And so now what we're going to do is we are going to close in that gap and then we are going to kind of um, stitch around the eyes to bring them into the head just a little bit. Adds a little bit of character. So I'm going to take my tapestry needle and so what I do is kind of like a decrease all the way around so I take my um, tapestry needle, insert my needle into the front loop of each stitch and wrap around, insert, and pull. I do that over two stitches and pull, and then I'm going to do that again and pull. And so now um, we are going to pull tight and it closes in nice and tight as if we did six single crochets into a magic circle. It's not perfect, but it is pretty close. And then if there's any, t like any tiny bit of a gap, 
then I just kind of bring my needle through just to kind of close it off. Normally you would have like your hair that would cover this, but um, this is our bear, so we're not gonna really have any hair. So now I'm going to take my um, tapestry needle and pull through and we're gonna come down right next to this eye. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come up right over the eye right here. And then I'm gonna push this needle all the way back like this. And then we are going to pull tight like that. And then we are gonna just kind of um, adjust and then the eyes kind of just pushed into the head just the slightest. And then we are gonna do the same thing over here. Please don't mind the bunnies, I'm so sorry. <laughs> they are um, on one, probably because yesterday was 4th of July and they were just like, what is going on? I'm gonna do the same thing there. So now the eyes are just kind of slightly indented just a little bit. If you need to adjust, I kind of take my um, needle and just move it and then tighten. And there we go. Okay, so you just want to make sure that your head shape is still pretty decent back here. You don't want to have any indents from pulling your yarn. And then just kind of weave this throughout the head back and forth. Um, and then that way it is nice and secure and then you could cut off there we go let's do the ears real quick there's two parts to the ears so we are going to do six single crochets into a magic circle Okay, now this might be new to you, but it's okay. I promise you'll be able to get through it. Some of these new details might seem daunting, but they're pretty simple. Just take your time. I'll try to go a tad bit slower. So I have six single crochets into the magic circle. I'm gonna pull tight and we're not gonna join or like work in the rounds. We're actually gonna chain and turn. So we're gonna chain one and turn. So we have this yarn right here. I probably should have went a little longer, but at least this length, just so that you could sew that in. Um, you don't want to have it too short, but you will have another tail to work, um, sew it on. So no worries. There's a lot of forgiveness here. So you are going to chain one and turn and work six single crochets across. So that's just one single crochet into each stitch. No increases, just very basic and simple. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then the last one right here is six. So this one's a little tight. Six. So there is our ear. And then we're gonna make another small one here with a different color, but so good 12 inches and you will make two of these. Okay, so that's your ear. So now let me show you how to make the arms. You will make two of these as well. Again, starting with the same thing, six single crochets into the magic circle. Now, this is a little different than my regular arms. We wanna have just a little bit of a bigger hand. So for round two, you're going to work two single crochets into each stitch all the way around. And 
at this point, I just kind of want to tighten this off. some of that tail. So for round three of the arms, you're going to do a decrease round, work one single crochet into the first stitch, and then a decrease into the next two. So one single crochet, one single crochet, decrease. And this will give you a total of eight single crochets for round three. So for round four, you're going to work another decrease round, work one single crochet into the next two stitches, and then decrease, and repeat that. One single crochet into the next two stitches, and then decrease, and then that will leave you with a total of six single crochets. Okay, so then there is our little hand part. So for round five, six, seven, and eight is simple. One single crochet into each stitch all the way around. That's um, a total of four more rounds and that will be the final round and then we will close off. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pinch this and then we're going to work a single crochet through both sides. So I put my hook through both. I'm going to pull through then pull through two and do that one more time. Pull through, pull through two. So that's closed off our arm and you'll leave a long enough tail to sew onto the body. work um, six single crochets into a magic circle. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you're just going to pull tight and that is it. And you don't have to leave so much of a long tail. Like I said, you're going to make two of these total. So working the nose, we are going to work three single crochets into a magic circle. So that's one, two, and three. Pull to tighten up. And then we are going to work a chain one, and then you're going to turn. So round or row two, you are going to work one single crochet into the first stitch, two single crochets into the next stitch, and one single crochet into that last stitch, which is kind of a tight stitch. So we have four single crochets total chain one and turn round or row three, one single crochet into each stitch all the way across. All right, so now we have created this little triangle. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna work across this area right here. So I'm gonna work a little slow you're going to chain one and then what we want to do is work one single crochet up uh, or well it's two single crochets total so one single crochet here and one single crochet here so I did a chain one just to kind of move that over so there's one and then I don't want to go specifically into this hole because it will create this little gap so I'm just going to work into that one loop right there to get it moving up and then in this area, which is a little tight here because this is where we pulled our yarn, we're going to work three single crochets. So just kind of get into a one loop 
and work one, two, and three. So what we've done is we've come up, we've created three stitches here. Now we're gonna work back down. So we're just gonna create one single crochet here and one single crochet here. And so I wanna work over this yarn as well while I'm doing that. So I'm gonna insert my hook and then just work my single crochet. And then I'm gonna pull this yarn to tighten that up. And then I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna work a single crochet into this area. I don't want to um, create a gap, so I'm just gonna go into one of the loops like that. And then we are going to do a slip stitch. So I'm going to work the slip stitch into this area right here. So I'm gonna take my hook and insert it and then pull through and pull through. And so now you could cut your yarn and then I'm gonna pull tight. So we have created our little nose right here. Let's move that out of the way. And then this is going to go right here. But we still gotta stitch his nose right there. So for stitching on the nose, I'm going to take a black um, yarn and then I'm gonna split it for two strands. So I'll split it and then if it's a good split, you should be able to just kind of pull like this and then it will just come off. Sometimes that doesn't work out like that all the time. But so now I will save this one for the eyebrow detail and put that aside and then I will use this one for the nose. So go ahead and get your tapestry needle. And then what I'm going to do here is I am going to bring this through and come through over here. So now we have a line right there in the middle and then come back around, come through again. And then I'm going to insert in the middle around here, pull through and then bring it down back through the middle right here, just like that. And then now we have our little nose. And so what I'll do is I'll cut this and then we'll tie it off. off right there and now you have your nose and that looks a little crooked to me <laughs> so you could just kind of mess around with it but also it adds a little character too so now we're going to work the tummy and you are going to work four single crochets into a magic circle. So that's one, two, three, and four. Tighten up and then you're going to chain one and turn. So that was row one, row two will be one single crochet into the first stitch and two single crochets into the next two stitches. So one, two, and then a single crochet into the last stitch. Row three, so you're gonna chain one and turn and work one single crochet into each stitch. That will be six single crochets. Row four, chain one and turn. We're gonna work one single crochet 
into the next two stitches, two single crochets into the next two stitches, one, two, and then two single crochets into the last two stitches, and that will give you a total of eight single crochets. And you're going to chain one and turn, and then one single crochet into each stitch all the way across. So now we're going to do the same thing as we did before with the nose, but this will entail working a few more stitches up this way. So now we're going to chain one, we're going to turn up this way, and we're going to work single crochets evenly up the side. So one, two, three, and four. So that was four single crochets, and then three single crochets into this middle gap right here. One, two, three. And pull that yarn to tighten that up. See, now that's a good tight. Um, that closed up that gap pretty tight there. And now again, four single crochets evenly down this side. We're gonna work over our yarn that tail yarn. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and four. I'm going to work this into one of these loops right here as opposed to that hole to try to make less of a gap. And now we're gonna slip stitch into this stitch right here. And now we have our little tummy. So we are gonna pull that. So we want to get, you can go ahead and make longer tails and sew it on. I personally like to glue it on. So I'm gonna get rid of these tails right here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue right there. And then I'm gonna push that down over the glue, take my scissors and push down. And that will secure those down there and cut that off. So now we have our tummy. So now we're gonna make the bow. So let's go ahead and get a magic circle going. And now we are gonna chain three. One, two, and three. And we are going to work two treble crochets. So to do that, I'm gonna wrap my yarn around my hook two times. Insert into the loop, pull through the yarn, and now we're gonna pull through sections of two. So we're gonna go yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through the last two. And that is our treble. And we're gonna do that again, yarn over twice, insert my hook into the loop, pull up, and then pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. Now we're gonna chain three, one, two, and three, and work a slip stitch into the magic circle. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna be working the same thing into the magic circle again. So you're gonna chain three, one, two, and three, work your trebles, your two trebles, and then you're gonna chain three, and you're gonna slip stitch into your magic circle. So now is the fun part. You get to see it all come together. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your tail yarn right here, and you're gonna pull that tight. And so when I pulled it tight, you see we have a bow that's coming together. You're gonna cut off your working yarn and you're gonna pull that through. And 
so then now what I like to do is tighten these up and I like to kind of um, make them a little flatter. I'm gonna take these two yarns, right, or two tails, and I'm gonna pull them together. And so you're gonna wanna have your glue gun handy for this. I just kinda keep mine on over here. And then I'm going to wrap them twice like this, okay? So you wanna just make sure that you're wrapping evenly. Sometimes one side can become bigger than the other if it's not even, but again, that's okay. Nothing has to be perfect. That's something that's really hard for me. I feel like everything has to be perfect, but I've learned character is cute, and so it is okay. These are handmade and unique, and that is perfect. So you've wrapped around twice. Now I'm gonna take my glue gun, sorry about that, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue right here. And I'm gonna push that down, get my scissors, and hold that in place. The coolness of the metal tends to um, have the glue set up quicker. And then I'm gonna cut that off. As you can see, that's nice and neat. It's not like bulky. And then we are going to have our bow. So now we have our bow, we have our tummy, we have our little snout and nose. We have our two arms right here. And then we have all of our ear pieces. So we should have two of the cream and then two of our base. And now we are gonna take this and put it all together and create a cute little bear. So let's get our tapestry needle and we are going to add our arms. So what I like to do for this one is I'm gonna come down. So we have our neck, it's kind of like three rows down. So one, two, and three, like in the middle there. So between those two rows, I'm gonna insert my tapestry needle right there, kind of skip two stitches and come out on this side. And this is lined up with the leg, so that kind of helps for reference too. Then I'm gonna bring my my tapestry needle in right there and I'm gonna pull tight and insert back into the body and pull to secure that. So now we have our arm somewhat attached. It's just kind of even. And then I'm gonna take my tapestry needle, come back in through, and then I'm gonna come up and insert through this portion right here in the middle and then back down here and push through. So it's almost secure. My last step for attaching the arm is coming back through right next to this stitch right here. And then I insert through the arm right here to grab that end and come back down through there and then pull tight. And that arm is nice and secure. And then you could just kind of weave in your tail end. I do it one up and then I go back and then I'll cut off. I'm trying to find that tail. There we go. And then back through. And we can remove that. And you're gonna repeat that for this arm right here. So now we have those ready to go. All right, so now, again, having your glue gun handy, we are going to attach these two parts and then we'll move on to the ears and the bow and then we'll add some blush. 
So what I like to do is take some glue and add some around the border here. Like that and a little bit in the middle. You wanna try to not get too much because this glue can seep through um, the gaps. And then we're gonna, before we officially line it down, go ahead and line it up to make sure it looks nice and even and then press the sides down and there is your tummy. So you can, like I said, you could definitely um, stitch this on. I just kind of like the way it looks and it is um, easier to get just a cleaner look this way, I feel like, with, instead of stitching it on. And then same thing with our little nose. We are going to put some glue. And then let's line it up with the face like that. And it is on. Again, like I said, character is cute. So nothing has to be absolutely perfect. It's kind of, I don't know if it's realistic to have every single thing look exactly the same. But again, we're not machines. We are just making these and um, it adds character because we're hand making these and that's part of the cuteness. Okay, so our nose is on and now we are going to work on our ears. So let's set that aside, grab both your ears. And so um, you are going to stitch these on first and then we are going to glue these on. So what I like to do is I'll grab one ear and I like to have these stitches facing the right side. So if you were to do your ears this way, then this is technically the wrong side because the top of the stitches are poking out this way, which gives that kind of like um, V look. It's kind of like a knitted look right there. So I call this the right side and this the wrong side. I'm gonna take my yarn and then we are going to, I kind of like to just line up with the eyes and then come up over. So we have the middle part right here and then I kind of come over right about one stitch over, line up with the eye, and then push that through there. I'm gonna double check to see if that's a good position. I think that's a good position. And then I'm gonna bring my needle. If I'm saying hook instead of needle, I'm sorry. <laughs> I probably will be. And then I'm going to come in right about here and then grab the other side of the ear right here. Hold that down and then push that needle back through to secure that. And then before we move on, let's go ahead and make sure that looks good. Looking pretty good. And then I am going to, so you could finish doing this ear, but what I like to do before I officially sew everything down is get the other ear on, make sure everything looks good, and then move on to stitching them down. So I'm gonna do the same process, but this process, we have the, the tail ends on this side. So I'm gonna line the ear up with where I want it which is right there. So we have the middle, we're a little stitch over this way, right about there. And then, let's see. So I'm just lining it up to make sure it looks good. And then I'll bring that needle through so that I could grab on this side, pull up and then pull back and then let's see how that's looking perfect you could also use like um 
pins, sewing pins, and push them down and sew it. I personally don't like to do that. I think I'm just lazy and I don't want to have the extra stuff around me. So this is what I like to do just to make sure they are in place. And so now we could go ahead and finish sewing these down. So since I have my tapestry needle for this ear, I'm going to go ahead and bring this through. And then let's see if I make sure I'm close so you could see. So I'll bring the needle through, put the needle through the ear right there so that it's attached, come back down and then bring the needle back this way. And when I pull, that's gonna pull that down. I'm just gonna do that across. So I'll let you watch as I do it and try to explain so that it helps. So now we're gonna come through right here. Again, bring it back right there, pull down tight. And then the last one will be right here. Bring it down, pull through and pull down this way. And so I like to secure this part of the ear down a little bit more. So I'm gonna insert my needle right there and then push it back this way to secure that. And that kind of brings it down and creates that ear shape. And then we are done with this tail and we can weave that and cut off. And then I'm gonna take this tail right here and I'm just gonna sew that down. So I'm gonna bring that through, pull that, and then just kind of go through one and two. And cut that off. And let's do the same thing on this side, okay? All right, we're almost there, just a few more finishing touches. So let's take our um, inside of our ear. And so I'm gonna do the same process that I do with gluing down. I'm going to take just a little bit of glue right here, just a tad. Put that down right there. And then bring these two over here and push down. And that will secure those down enough to be able to add some more glue. Okay, so those are secured down. What the plan is, is to put glue here and then glue it down there. Okay, so grab your glue. Make sure that little piece is down. And then you're going to push it down into the ear like this. You can also sew that down as well. I just glue it. <laughs> so that is nice and secured there and glued down. So you just wanna make sure that you could still see the brim of that part of the ear. And we are gonna do the same thing. So let's repeat the process on the other side.
Alrighty guys, I almost forgot to add the eyebrows. So let's add our eyebrows. So my rule of thumb is I like to take my tapestry needle and just insert it in the head real quick. I wanna show you where I like to place the bottom part of the eyebrow. So my rule is one, two, one, two. So I know I wanna insert my needle right there. So that's one, two, and then one, two. So like, boom, like that. And then I insert, and then I want to come up here. So it's kind of like one, two, one, two, like that. And we have our little eyebrow there. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So my rule of thumb is one, two, one, one, two, one, two. So right here should be where it goes. So we have one, two, one, two, and then one, two, one, two, right there. I don't know if that helps, <laughs> but that's kind of like what I feel helps me to make them a little bit more even. There we go. You know what, good enough. Let's sew those in. Get those on. And then I just kind of make sure that any black pieces, the darker pieces of yarn aren't showing. You could do brown, you could, you know, whatever you'd like. I just kind of like the way the black looks, it pops more. And then let's move that there and cut that off. Get all of our little tails out of the way. See how that little black piece right there is showing? I just take my tapestry needle and pull through like that. Okay, so let's get her bow on. Or if you wanted to just leave it like that, you can leave it like that. And then what would be cute too is if you wanted to make it a little boy, you can add a bow tie right there. And make it maybe a little smaller. You could do the same process and do double crochets instead of tri treble, cro uh, treble crochets. But we'll go ahead and put the bow up here. And then we will add our blush. So let me get a little bit of glue right here. So I like to make a line like this. You wanna have a good amount, but not too much because you don't want it to seep through. So now I'm gonna take my bow, make sure it looks nice and even, and then push down like this. You could even sew your bow on as well. Um, what I think would be super cute too is to have a little fabric bow. You could even get like those at Hobby Lobby. You could do flower crowns, um, which I'll probably do a separate tutorial on how to add the flower crowns to these, either felt or um, you could do crocheted flower crowns. There's so much you could do with the base of this. So our bow is on. Let's go ahead and add our blush. Okay, so I um, have my, this is my e.l.f. This is a dollar. So you get this at Walmart, Target, maybe even the Dollar Tree. This is what I like to use. I have my little, um, more for eye makeup, but I like to use it for my blush. I picked this one up. It's a Milani one, but it was a rose. And I thought it was so cute. So this is my new blush that I've been using for my dolls lately. So I'll just take some blush, get it on both sides, and then I will blush or brush on the blush <laughs> like that. Both sides. And then like that. This tends to rub off over time, so I just let anyone know that they can always add more blush themselves. I think it's good to put a little bit more in the beginning because even through the packaging process and whatnot, it tends to kind of just dull down a little bit. So it might like it might look like too much at first, but. It tends to kind of um, rub off just a tad. All right, you could even use um, some fabric paint and that will definitely secure it a lot more. I've never really done that, um, not as of yet, but I might experiment 
with that in the future. So there we go. We finished our baby shower bear. I will do a separate tutorial on um, different details, on doing a bow tie here, adding a flower crown. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please hit that um, like button and share this video as well with all your crocheted friends. Um, and remember to subscribe. That way you can be informed. You can hit that subscribe and then hit the little bell. That way you're also notified whenever I come out with new tutorials. So there we go. Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to crocheting with you guys again next time.